Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Profile Manager. And what we're going to do specifically is look at how do you manage users and groups uh, with profiles in Profile Manager. Now, one of the things that you can do that uh, makes managing users easier, if you've got multiple users, would be to put them into groups. And you can see here I've got a couple of groups set up. I've got an everyone group. I've got a family group, which has two users, a work group, which has three users. And the reason this is easier is if you've got a bunch of users that are going to need the same settings for their devices, instead of having to go one user at a time to configure everything, you can configure them in groups and then have uh, that configured once and then push to every user that you've got. So let me just give you an idea of the types of things that you can configure profiles for, and you're going to begin to see how powerful Profile Manager is. So if I come into Settings here, you can see this is my Settings for Everyone profile, and as we said earlier, these are just the settings that uh, we have already in our server application for our different Mac apps. But what I'm going to do is instead of uh, just leaving this alone, I'm going to click on Edit here. And what Edit does is it takes us into the payload uh, for the Settings for Everyone profile. And then what happens is it shows us down the side here all of the things that we can configure, and then over here is where we would configure those things. So if you look, we've got things that would go across Mac OS, iOS, and TV OS right here. And TV OS has been added right now uh, to the actual payloads because you can manage your Apple TVs with, this, with uh, profiles as well. So you can see that. Then we've got Mac and iOS uh, settings that we can do. So that eliminates tvOS, but there's overlap. Then we have iOS and tvOS, and these are the different things that you can do with them. And also then we have iOS by itself, and then finally Mac OS by itself all the way down here, and then tvOS by itself. So those are just the little headings that are in between. So let's just kind of walk through some of the things you can set up. Uh, we've got a general uh, setup here, and this just gives you the information on your organization. You can put a description in there, the security controls, right? Controls when a profile can be removed, always with authorization or never. So again, you can put never on there, and then someone can't take that profile off their device without your authorization. Uh, you could also have automatically remove profile, either never on a certain date or after an interval. And where this, is, where this is great is if you've got, let's say, a contractor coming into your business and they need one of these profiles to go on your network, maybe you want to give them network access and all of that, you can set it up to expire on a certain date or after a certain period of time, and it will then just take the profile off their machine automatically, and they won't then have access to your network again. So it's kind of a nice way to be able to set that up for certain users. So if you made like a, a contractor's group here, you could change, set that up that way, and it would take care of those profiles. Now, the other thing we've got is network. You can actually configure. If I click configure, you can configure your network in here. So all of the details about joining your network, you can set that information up here so that someone comes in. Once they load the profile, they've automatically got their login, the SSD, everything they need to join your network. And again, this works across all three devices. We've got certificates, the same kind of thing here. If you have certain certificates that you want to include, you can put that in here so that they have your certificate on their device. Again, this, is, this would come in handy a little bit more in corporate environments or maybe even schools if you've got a purchase certificate that you want to have show up on everybody's uh, device. Uh, so they automatically have that taken care of, you would put that in here. And the same thing with SCEP, right, which is, is just a uh, simple certificate enrollment uh, profile. And it's the same kind of thing. Again, you, you'd use it a little bit more if you want specifics here uh, for particular uh, certificates maybe that you've purchased or that you're working with across some kind of a network. Okay, now let's look at the Mac uh, OS and iOS things that are in common. Uh, if you look here, we've got passcode. So you can do all kinds of settings on the passcode. So if you want to set the type of passcode they need to have, you can do that in here. You can say you want alpha uh, numeric values in there, the minimum length of the passcode, complex characters, you know, all the things that you'll typically find on websites where they limit, you know, what you can put in as a passcode or require certain characters and things. You can set that up in here yourself so that all of that will uh, show up on their device and they'll need to make their password fit whatever configuration you've set up. Uh, you can see we've got mail. We can set up mail payloads here. And you can see we already have one payload that we set up with our mail server. Uh, you can set up Exchange in here, uh, the same type of thing, all the information you need for your Exchange server. Uh, here we've got the, um, the LDAP or our open directory. And so you can configure the particular open directory information that a user needs so that they can uh, get access to your open directory's uh, server. And then we've got things for contacts, as you can see here. We've got contact information that shows up for our contacts, and then calendar, the same kind of thing. 
where we've got all of our calendar information in here as well. We've got our VPN payload that we've already set up. If I want to add another one, I just click the plus button and it will give me access to another one to set up. You notice I can put web clips in here as well. Again, I'm just kind of taking you through all these settings. So if you've got a web clip that you want to show up on their iOS devices or somewhere on the Mac, you can set this up with an icon and everything and it will show up on their uh, device as a button to push to get to that particular website. You can upload fonts if you want. If you've got a font kit that you want to upload to particular machines, you can do that. And then you can also configure AirPlay uh, for different AirPlay devices. And if I just click the plus here, I can uh, put in any AirPlay destinations that I have here and add them to the list. And then those will be added to the, that, those particular uh, user devices. If we scroll down here, you can see for iOS and tvOS, we can set up a global uh, web proxy. And that's if you want to go through some kind of proxy server. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you probably won't need to use it, but we have that in here. And then also app configuration. And so you can set up a bundle here of different apps or a certain app identifier and then upload a configuration for it and it will show up on the iOS or tvOS devices. So in iOS now, if you look for our users here, and these again are for our, our user settings, not just our devices, I can configure the restrictions on the device, on what they have access to. Maybe I don't want them to have music, so I can uncheck that so they don't have any music. Again, that's if I've got a supervised device. Uh, you notice it's got a lot of information now in classrooms because they have added a whole classroom module in here. But you can see all the different things that I can allow access to or remove. Like if I don't want them to get access to iCloud photo sharing, I can uncheck that and that's gone. All of these things. And so, you know, as you take a look at them and you want to customize uh, particular things on an iOS device, you can do it right here. Same thing with apps. You can choose which apps they have um, are allowed to use or not and how they can use Safari and then different uh, other, other restrictions and things in here. And then media content. You can restrict their media content to particular ratings. And so this comes in handy if you've got kids that you can just kind of set up their device so it doesn't have access to certain things you don't want them to have. There is a content filter that's built into iOS where I can uh, use the built-in limit adult content. I can say specific websites only, and that means I can then tell it which websites I will allow users to go to. So again, if you've got kids, you can just limit the websites to certain ones that you want. I can also add a plug-in. If I've got a particular filter or plug-in that I want to that I want to set up, I can put that in here too to do my content filtering. Uh, so again, it's a it's it's really a nice way to be able to manage devices, especially if you've got kids or in a school or something like that. Uh, for domains, I can again um, set up what email domains, how I manage Safari web domains, and that sort of thing. Uh, again, I got single sign-on where I can create an account in a realm and a certificate, and that will sign me into my different uh, devices. Uh, again, AirPrint, so I can set up an AirPrint server uh, for a particular, uh, let's say, printer I might have on my network. If I put this up here, I put in the IP address and the resource path, and it will add it to my iOS device. Set up a Google account, so if I've got a Google account, I can log in with that. Any subscribed calendars you might have out there, you can set those up as well. I can even configure how I want cellular handled in terms of the cellular um, part of my device. Here's my Mac OS uh, server accounts. That's already set up, so I don't have to set that up myself. I got the home screen layout, and this is nice. I can choose which applications I want to have in the dock. And see, I can pick whatever apps I've got here, and I can just choose which ones I want to have in the dock. I can choose what I want to have on page one. I can add a page, so I got page two, so that I can actually lay out my entire iPad or iPhone right here and have it pushed to the device, and it will have it set up the way I've laid it out in here. So again, you can just kind of see the power of what you can do. Uh, I've got network usage rules, where I've got particular rules, where I say this particular uh, doc, you know, com.mycompany, I can allow cellular data or not allow roaming. You know, If I want to turn off roaming because I don't want to pay for it, I could do that right in here. And then I can set up notifications. So what notifications do I want to have for particular apps? So I put my app name in here and show the range of notifications that I allow. Again, just really incredible stuff. Uh, same thing for Macs. So I've got my identification already. I can set up restrictions on the Mac, right? Restrictions to certain system preferences. I can uncheck them and they won't show up. Restrictions on apps. I can set up widgets in here. Restrictions on media, what they can and can't have access to. Uh, sharing. The different things they can that will show up in their different sh in their share drop down, and then functionality, right? If they can if they can use the camera or not, or if I want them to use Touch ID to unlock devices, 
I mean, again, just uh, really great specifics. Uh, security and privacy, same thing. Everything that you see in system preferences that you can set up, you can set up right here. Uh, messages, same thing. You can set up the different messages here. And then I've got an AD certificate. That's if I'm going to have to join an Active Directory, which would be a Microsoft directory on my Mac. I can set up the uh, configuration profile right in here as well. And then my login items. If I come in here, I can say what apps I want to automatically launch at login. Uh, I can set up the files and folders that are going to be open on my desktop at login. Uh, different mounts. So when I talk to you about setting up some of your shared drives for file sharing, you can actually add those in here. You choose the protocol right here, the host name, and then the volume that you want to have mount, and it will automatically mount that volume for you. And this is really great because it makes it so easy to use. I can do that with authenticated network mounts and just regular network mounts as well. Uh, we've got mobil mobility here, and I'm going to show you more on mobility in a future screencast, but this basically allows you to have a managed uh, laptop, let's say, that, is, that has its home folders on your server, uh, that will then sync those home folders back to your server so that you can take your laptop outside your network, do your work on it, come back in the network, and it'll sync everything back to the home folders on the server. Uh, again, I can customize the dock. So size, whether it's hidden, what side it's on, what items are in there. I set up my printers in here. I've got parental controls. I can set the parental controls right in here and time limits. I can even set up how my finder looks, the preferences and the different commands and things. Uh, then I've got accessibility, which again is in, in, prof uh, in your system preferences, so for vision, hearing, and interacting. And then again, if I have different proxies that I want to use for a proxy server to browse the web, and then I even have custom settings here where I can set up a preference domain and then put in different uh, key values by uploading a, a profile. And then here I've got restrictions on my uh, Apple TV as well, whether I want to disable AirPlay or pairing with a remote app. So if I don't want people creating their own remote apps, I can disable that. And, or I can require a passcode on first uh, AirPlay so that only devices that I allow to have a passcode can do that. So as you can see, there are a ton of things that I can do in here in Profile Manager. And uh, as you experiment with it, you'll start to find it's a great way to work with your uh, users and groups and managing them to get what you want on their devices. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.